So we're talking about determination. And that might be the one thing you need to get through over the hump right now, whether it be your job, marriage, your relationship with God, whatever it might be. You might be thinking of giving up, tapping out, giving in, giving under, and, uh, and moving on. But determination is such a critical quality. And what I want to do is just take a couple minutes and just let's just talk about determination. Let's think about it right now. And I want to do three things. Number one, I want to tell a story of Abraham Lincoln, uh, President of the United States. We know uh, the latter part of his story, being president, one of the best presidents ever. But that guy encountered so much challenge and so much failure in his life. Were it not for determination, we would not know who Abraham Lincoln was. He'd have been just lost in the, in the garbage dump of what could have been throughout history. Then I want to, I want to look at two uh, scriptures from the New Testament. One kind of outlines what determination is, and then the, the other kind of gives us a little insight of how we can develop determination, strengthen that muscle uh, in our lives. So first, let's just look at Abraham Lincoln, 16th president of the United States. Everybody knows who he is. But do you know that at seven years old, uh, Abe Lincoln's family was forced out of their home, and at seven years old, he needed to work to support his family. Two years later, his mom died. At 19, his sister died. At 22 years old, young Abraham Lincoln decided he wanted to start a business. And uh, by the year's end, that business failed. At 23, young, ambitious Abraham Lincoln decided he wanted to run for state legislator. Well, he lost. The same year, he got fired from his job. The same year, at 23, he applies to law school. Doesn't even get in. Rejected. So at 24, he decides he wants to try again his hand at business, borrows money from a friend, and by the year's end, uh, he's bankrupt. 27 years old, still young, Abraham Lincoln has a nervous breakdown. And the guy's in bed, bedridden for six months. The next year, at 28 years old, he tries again his hand at politics. He runs for state legislature, and well, he, was, he lost again. 31 tries again his hand at state politics, and again, the guy loses. The next uh, couple of years, he marries his wife, Mary, and things are looking up and good, so he decides he, he wants to run for Congress, United States Congress. Well, he lost. Three years after that, he's about 36 years old. He runs for Congress again, and congratulations, P President Lincoln, you won that election. Good for you. You move to Washington. A couple years later, though, you know, you have to run for re-election. Well, he does that, and he loses. He lost. Has to move back to, to Illinois. But he does not give up. He does not give up. He tries to get a job as a land officer in Illinois, but he doesn't get the job. He tries his hand at business again. Fails again. 42 years old. He's already failed more times in his life than I have at 52. And uh, he runs for Senate. I'm going to run for Senate. And he fails. So he, six years or eight years later, the age of 49, he runs again for Senate and he loses again. And then at the age of 51, he runs for president in 1860 and the guy wins. So much failure. So many trials, so many tribulations, so many challenges, so many defeats before this guy finally broke through and became president of the United States. Were it not for determination, we would not even know who this great president, this great man was. We wouldn't have Abraham Lincoln. I wonder how many, how many men and women in our army we don't have because of determination or how many great Americans we don't have because we lost them because they gave up or how many great Christians and Christian leaders the church does not have throughout the ages because of a lack of determination so let me do just a couple things a couple minutes I wanted to share two scriptures with you the first is Romans chapter 5 verse 3 and 4 where the apostle Paul shares a little bit about the nature of determination. You can find that uh, in any Bible or uh, on your cell phone, Bible app. Uh, the book of Romans, uh, letter uh, that Paul wrote to the church in Rome, commonly known as Romans, chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. 
Paul says this, and check this out. He says, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. That's verse three. He says, we rejoice in our sufferings. We rejoice, Paul. And that's not a kind of something you would commonly associate with trials or hardships or whatever it is you're going through. I'm sure you're not feeling joyful of it. But Paul says, we rejoice in it because it produces endurance. Because, another word for endurance is determination. Because it's working our determination muscle. It's giving us an opportunity to make that muscle strong. It's giving us an opportunity to choose to be determined to not give up. So we're stronger because of it. You don't work the determination muscle when everything's going well. You don't work the determination muscle when everything is rain and rose petals and gold dust. Determination is earned and developed in the trenches, in hard times, and in challenges, and maybe what you're, what you're going through right now. And Paul says that determination produces character. And character, this is verse 4, produces hope. So in the end, People with character or people marked by hope have that because they've gone through the trenches, because they've worked through, because they've chosen determination. So, so these trials, these challenges, these tribulations, or even these failures that are going on in your life right now is an opportunity to develop this determination muscle. I want to share with you a quote. Uh, from a leadership expert, maybe you've heard of John Maxwell, written about 5 million books, all of them really fantastic. I have about 2.5 million on my bookshelf, so I need to catch up with the guy. He just keeps churning books out. I just think he just regurgitates the same thoughts and just kind of markets it under a different title. But anyways, John Maxwell says this. Think about this. This, is, this briefs well, command and staff. It is impossible to succeed without suffering. If you are successful and have not suffered, someone has suffered for you. And if you are suffering without succeeding, perhaps someone will succeed after you. But there is no success without suffering. So if you and your career have found success, John Maxwell would argue somebody has suffered. Maybe you, maybe somebody else for that success. He's also said, if you're suffering right now, Maxwell will tell you that maybe the groundwork is being laid for you or somebody else to succeed. So how can we develop determination in our own lives? Uh, I want to just share with you a couple of things about that, how you can develop determination. And again, we're going back to the Apostle Paul right now, and we're going to the book of Philippians the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, commonly called Philippians. Again, you can find that in your Bible or on a Bible app. We're going to look at chapter 3, beginning with verse 10. And I just kind of want to outline what Paul is doing here. Paul is, is talking about his life's goal right here in verse 10. His main desire, his number one core value, the one thing he wants to be successful in in his life, he's talking about it. He says that I might know Christ and the power of his resurrection and share his sufferings and become like him in his death. So there's a lot of theological words that we can unpack there. But the bottom line, Paul is saying, is, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like the one I'm following. And I want others to see that and be inspired for that. That's the number one thing he has in his life. And he says, by any means possible, I want to, I, I, I want to attain this. And then in verse 12 and following, he gives a status report. And the first thing he says in verse 12, he says, not that I've already obtained this, but I press on to make it my own. In verse 13, he says, Brothers, I don't consider that I've made it, but the one thing I do do, forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So basically, Paul says here, I'm failing at this. In verse 12, I've not obtained this. Verse 13, I haven't made it on my own. Paul's saying, I'm failing. I'm trying, but I'm not succeeding. 
And there are many reasons why that we could point to if we know Paul's life. There were a lot of external forces that Paul faced that just kind of made life hard for him. He was imprisoned, he was beaten, he was threatened, and I'm sure that probably after the fourth time Paul was whipped for his beliefs, he might have said, I want to give up. Maybe this isn't worth it. You know, but there were also internal forces as well. You know, Paul faced a, a lot of kind of inner demons, if you will. At one point in the scriptures, he talks about a thorn in his side that he just can't deal with. Well, I don't know what it was, but there was something in Paul's life, this inner thing that just kind of made him want to give up. Some, at one point, Paul said, you know, the things I do, I hate. And the things that I don't do are the things I need to do. So he had these inner reasons he wanted to, he could have been tempted to give up as well. He also had people failing him, people he believed in, letting him down, betraying him. He had people he invested in and mentored go a different way. He had churches that he helped plant disappoint him. So he faced so much disappointment as well. So Paul had a, had a lot of reasons why he could have been tempted to fail or he could have been tempted to give up. But he doesn't. What he does do, and we see it, in verse, we see it throughout this whole passage. Paul says, I press on. Look at the language he used. Or in verse 13, I strain forward. Verse 14, I press on towards the goal. These are words, these are terms of, of determination. Paul is hurting. He's struggling because all of these internal and external pressures, but he's fighting. He's not giving up. And I think in verse 13, there's a rule here that Paul uses that I think propels him forward. He says, one thing I do, I forget what lies behind and I strain forward to what lies ahead. Determination, Paul is telling us, is about focus. Paul says, I forget what's behind. Discouragement focuses on what's behind. Discouragement focuses on failure. Discouragement focuses on the past. Discouragement would have said to Abe Lincoln, you haven't been elected in every election you've been part of. You've lost so many jobs. You've tried to do so many businesses. All of these failures, discouragements, focus on these and make your decision. And if Abe did that, he'd have given up. Discouragement would have said to the Apostle Paul, you have tried your best with these churches, but look what they've done. Or look what they haven't done. And look how you failed. Or look at the sins that in your struggles in your life. Or discouragement would have said to the Apostle Paul, look at the people you've invested in who've let you down. Look at these mistakes. Look at these failures. Focus on them. But Paul says, I'm not going to focus on them. For I for, Paul says, I forget what lies behind and I strain forward to what lies ahead. And I'm looking again at verse 13. Determination focuses on the goal. Determination focuses on the future. I've got an, an amending right here. But I want to share with you something that I think you'll find interesting. This is uh, from a study conducted by the National Retail Dry Goods Association. And it's about focus. It's about what you focus on. Did you know this? 48% of all salesmen make one call and stop. And this is from John Maxwell, oh, by the way. 48%, just under half of every salesman makes one call and stops. 25% of all salesmen make two calls and stop. 15% of all salesmen make three calls and stop. 12% of all salesmen go back and back and back and back. And here's the kicker. They make 80% of all sales. They make 80% of all sales. 12% of all salesmen, the ones who focus on what's ahead, the win, the close, the success, 
the good future, the promises of God, whatever it might be, the ones who, who don't give up, the ones who are determined, make 80% of all sales. So maybe you're in a place now where you need to develop this determination muscle. The, the, the word of God, the promise of God, the advice of God, if you will, is Paul's rule, the Apostle Paul's rule of determination. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. One thing I do, Paul says, I forget what lies behind and I strain forward to what lies ahead. May you do the same. Have the best day possible. God bless.